Let's jump into exploring data, finding insights, and taking action all in one place, and that's Discover in Kibana 8. I'm looking at the upper left hand, and I'm looking at my metrics data. And this gives me an opportunity to get familiar with it in this default view. I can see all of the values of every document right here and scroll through them. I can also use this expanded button to expand a single document and take a look at it and look for specific fields or look for the JSON. Once I have an interesting thing in view, I can also tab through all the different documents that are here. And you can see on the left-hand side, it updates as I move through them piece by piece. So if I have an interesting list of documents, this is a great way to review them. Now, metric data is all about numbers and that might be interesting some days to look at trends and performance, but today I'm looking for events. And the best way to do that is with logs data. So I'm gonna use this menu in the upper left-hand corner to change my data context and look for some logs data. And right away I see that I'm missing that logs data. So I need to create a new data view to select that logs data. And here I can come in and just type in uh, logs, for example, and see that I have seven sources that match. And maybe I wanna keep typing to select only a couple of them, or maybe I wanna use all of them at once so I can search them all at once. In this case, I'm gonna take all of them at the same time. Once I do that, you can see I've switched over to my logs data and same kind of view, but just, just different data. I have a whole lot uh, more fields to look at and more interesting things to dive into with logs. Now, maybe I'm not familiar with logs either, and I wanna understand the shape of the data. That's a great opportunity to use field statistics. This will teach each of the columns of my data and show me the number of distinct values, the distribution of those values, be it categorical or number histogram, as well as gives me an opportunity to expand each one and look at the different values to see what those values are and how they're distributed. So I have four agents supplying me data. One of the agents is supplying 16%, the other is supplying 28. Kind of gives me some interesting questions I could start asking this data. Uh, when I go back to the Documents tab, this is a lot of data to look at, so maybe I want a more compact view. I can go to a single row, and now that I have a feeling for some of my columns, I can use this fields list on the left to start to whittle down the columns I'm most interested in. So I can select the timestamp, I can type the word logs here, and type uh, log level might be interesting to me, and any good logs data source has a message, and that's usually really, really interesting to understand what's going on with logs. I can resize this to get more space for the message. I can change the row configuration to maybe start to go multi-line for the message since that doesn't blow it up as much as it was before. And I can always bounce back to field statistics to just look at the field statistics for uh, the fields that I picked. So I can see that there's a lot of different times and there's only two values of log level. Two values, that's interesting. So let me open that up. Here I see that not only do I have info, I have some errors. So let me click this plus, and this adds it automatically to my search at the top. It's a very convenient way to kind of move between the aggregated data and the direct searching. Now back over on the document side, I see some interesting things here. I see an error uh, with a root cause called cluster block exception. Maybe I want to search for just those to isolate it, because maybe this is something I can take action on. This is where you switch from exploration to action. And Best way if you want to know to take action is to create an alert on something, this create search threshold rule. Now this will take everything that I had just picked and maybe I wanna paste in that cluster block exception. You can see it's coming from my log state of view. It's already searching for that block exception, log level of error. And I wanna see it when it matches just one of those. So that's like, that's all that matters. Here I can test the query and you can see nothing happened in the last five minutes. But if I switch this to the last five days, because I know something did happen, this is where I can validate that, yes, it's going to return two documents, and that would have fired if it was enabled already. So I'm going to go back to minutes, because I don't want to get the same you know, message for more than five minutes. And uh, this is going to run every five minutes, so that's perfect. Now I get to decide what to do. Maybe I want to make a ServiceNow issue, or in my case, I'm just going to make an email, as all good demos do. I'm going to email myself. Love talking to myself in demos. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm gonna use handlebars here to use the name of the alert uh, has occurred. So this way, if I'm uh, reusing this template, I can uh, just paste this in very easy. And then you can customize the message here or take another action too. So I'm gonna click save and this is now set up. It's operationally running and I will get notified anytime this message happens. So that's really cool. I'm gonna clear out some of these filters uh, so I can go back to kind of the overall data. Now. That's like the really 
obvious case if there's something that you can do, but sometimes you need to trend something a little bit to understand if it's um, becoming an issue or not. So, you know, this is a good one. There are some similar errors, turn up verbosity to see them. Um, maybe that's something I want to drill into and trend over time. So I can, you know, search for it and I can see the shape of that data up here at the top. And let's say I want to take this into something I can regularly look at. I can click this edit visualization button and change into lens, which lets me do things like switch from a bar chart to maybe an area of visualization. Maybe I want to like, you know, change how it looks and, you know, blue is my favorite color, which isn't true. It's actually green. But let's just say blue. And I hit save. And this is my uh, similar errors analysis because maybe I'm just kind of keeping tabs on it for myself. And now I can build a dashboard very easily. But you can kind of see how an exploration can start and discover helps you dial in that filter. And maybe the action isn't creating an alert, but the action is keeping an eye on it. Dashboards can be a great tool to help you keep an eye on stuff. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of an overview of the types of things you can do with Discover in Kibana 8. Really excited for all the great insights and question answering capabilities and action capabilities that are available now. Music